Hi, let's take a look at new window 8 Nuage implementation. Just like Cubase Pro 9, new window 8 has a new window zone layout, so you can dock different window zone on your project window. So under window zone, you can now assign user assignable keys for the left zone, the lower zone, and the right zone. So if you open the left zone, you'll find your inspector and visibility tab. The lower zone will have the mixer, the sample editor window, our new sampler, and chord pads tabs. The right zone will have the VST instruments and the media bay. Retrolog has now a new input side shining option, so you can now use Retrolog to modify an audio clip. For example, let's start by adding a VST instrument to this project. Notice now I can assign an output routing channel at the same time. We'll then select Retrolog and add track. I can now click on the sectioning button on the upper left corner of Retrolog. You can now see the input knob showing here. Next, under Channel Main tab, I need to route the channel that I want to modify through Retrolog. Now you can route multiple channels through Retrolog for more complex sound design. You can now select one or multiple audio clips I want to work with. I will define a loop section. I'll set my left locator and right locator and engage cycle. Next, I double click anywhere within the locator position. Click on edit in place and I will draw a MIDI note for the duration of the loop. This will trigger a key in Retrolog. Next, on the master unit, under channel, quick control, I can select up to eight different parameters from all the options that Retrolog has to offer. When ready, I can use the eight encoders below the touchscreen or the touchscreen to control the parameters. Now I can also use the fader unit, select quick control, select a channel, open the edit window for that channel, and use the flip function on the left side of the fader unit to control the selected parameters. When ready, I can use render in place to print my new clip. With new window 8, you can now set a punch in and punch out section on the timeline independently from the left and right locator. Use the cursor to choose a punch in position on the timeline and use the key command set punch in to project cursor position to set the punch in point on the timeline. Next, set the cursor to the punch out position on the timeline and use the key command set punch out to project cursor position to set the punch out point. To activate the punch point, push the punch in and punch out buttons on the transport section of the master unit. I can now set the left and right points of my locator and engage cycle. I can now select one or multiple tracks under track list, track arming, or select one or multiple folders I wish to record on. I'm now ready to go. You can also use the wrench tool to select a region and press set punch point to selection range to activate the punch in and out sections.
Just like Cubase Pro 9, New Window 8 also has a Mixer History tab in the Page Control section of the Fader Unit. Every move I make on the Fader Unit are carefully recorded with a timestamp on the History tab. I can then easily undo or redo my every move. Finally, a Surround VST multipanner is now not only compatible with Dolby Atmos, but also with Amazaki 22.2 and all 3D configurations. On a feather unit, I can simply select a channel, push the Edit Window button for that channel, and use the Flip mode to control the 3D panning of the selected channel.